Hi, this is Chantal from the Purring Cat Studio and welcome back to my channel. Um, today I want to show you how to make this beautiful notepad. Now, of course, everybody knows how to put sheets together and make a notepad, but this one has a few um, little interesting things in it and um, I'm very excited to show you. I mean, maybe you know some of these tricks, but I didn't know about um, at least one of them. <laughs> so I'm very, very happy to show you this. And uh, if you want to join me and see what I'm talking about, how about we meet each other on the other side of the intro? Okay, so as I was talking in the intro, um, not only is it like a trick I didn't know about, but it also could give you some ideas on how to transform some of your pages. So I'm going to show you this one real quick and then I'll show you how I made some of these pages. OK, so the first page here, um, this was just a book page, as you can see here, and I sprayed it and I'll show you what I do to spray it this way. Um, and I added this so it's a notepad so the goal of this is of course to have space to write now of course you could offer this as a little present um, it could be part of a larger um, group of items that you're making for somebody it's easily um, you know it's it's easy to slip in a journal because it's not too thick um, there's all kinds of things you could do with a notepad so I added this little flip out so it gives you more space to journal and we all love to open things I know I do <laughs> and let me see so the, a lot of these will be my papers so this is uh, one of my collections but I just uh, shrunk it so I printed it and I think I asked for the size to be I think it was five by seven you can play around with your printer because I wanted the bird to show in the design uh, this is one of the tricks I'm going to show you. I don't know if you can see, but this paper is kind of see-through. Although it started, uh, it started, hold on, like this. That's exact same paper from the same journal, but it doesn't look the same anymore. So I will show you how I did that. Um, this is another one of my papers. Um, this I added a little pocket and I hand stitched on both sides I thought it was a nice um, oh I don't know how to say the word but it reminds of the fact that there's black thread here so a reminder if you will and it allows you for of course journaling space here and one whatever you choose to put inside the pocket and of course each side is you know when you flip the page you have space to write on both sides and this is some more of my paper now the only thing i didn't do here and i will show you on the other one we will do together is i would usually put some sort of um white gesso because that way it allows to see the design underneath if you apply a very thin coat but it, it also allows for more writing space now of course like this is dark but if i take a black um, pen like a uh, yeah it's a sharpie pen this one you can certainly write and you'll see the handwriting but you could also put some white gesso and make this a little lighter and then again is the same paper I just showed you and it's kind of translucent and that's what I'm excited to teach you because I just learned this trick so most of them in here are my papers a few are from other digitals I've purchased from other people um this is my set as well i can't remember which one though um i think it's the last one i put out or did i put it out yet i'm not sure maybe not okay um this i didn't do much this is a page I, of paper i already had and i just added um some clear um embossing powder so i kind of like the effect and i like that it goes like a little bit on the other side and this is also the same technique I will show you today. It's really lovely. I love, love, love it. So I will go to the next one. So let me back up a tiny bit. 
so of course you can do uh, this pad in oops I'm realizing this is not the right size you can do this pad in whatever size you wish um, I don't know why I went with this size to tell you the truth it just so happens <laughs> that's all okay so it does, nothing has to be perfect okay the only thing I suggest is before you start attaching your sheets make sure you've treated all your sheets the way you want to you know you want them to be and you've done everything you wanted to do with them so for instance I use a spray bottle with water and I put some of the um, this this distress uh, spray stain and I mix it up and it makes the perfect shade of um, spray you know so for example on this actually two of these let me see maybe this one too um, maybe a bit here I don't know no this is pretty cool on its own <laughs> okay so let's say these three pages that I find a little too light for my taste so I will oops hold on I don't know what happened here it doesn't matter though I do like when it's random there's no nothing to be precise about I just pray and that's it for me this I find is enough so I will dry it and I'll be right back okay so I sprayed the other side also and I dried it with the dryer so okay um, I want this page first and then I think I'll have the book page and maybe this one and then that one and that that one but the thing I want to show you which I'm very excited about or at least one of the things is the treatment I did on certain pages now let me see there's another page I wanted to do it on um, the last one let me see here I know I want to do it on this one um, hmm I'm trying to see which one I want to have this effect I love it so much <laughs> I don't know for, so for now I'll just do these ones okay so here it is to get that transparency and translucent effect and wax paper effect well you use a candle now I took this idea from um, Bohemian crafting she's a wonderful crafter she's a professional you can see she's done it for I, I would say minimum 10 years I'm thinking um, hold on sorry about that I was completely dehydrated um, and I watch her amongst others and uh, I just seen her do this but she had like special waxes that I don't have so I just decided to try it with a candle so there's two ways you can rub your candle against your paper just make sure you don't rip your paper while you do that like so okay and here we go I will put the camera closer hopefully you can see what it does it's so much fun and then while I do it um, you will see me use the candle just to put wax where I feel it should need more okay and here we go
Now, I don't, I'm don't. i sure you see how shiny it is. All I do is I take a, a, a piece of uh, paper. It could be a piece of fabric, whatever you have. Like an old cloth of some sort. And I just brush the excess. Like so. Oops, I see there's some missing on the corner there. So I'm going to repeat right here. Maybe it's a trick you knew, but I did not know this trick. And I am in love with this trick. Oh my goodness. I don't know if you can see my fingers through it or maybe something oops, something red. Do you see what it does? It's like wax. Well, it's not like wax paper. Now this is wax paper and it changes the whole texture and it's it's thicker and more solid i'm in love with this thank you bohemian crafting <laughs> i hope you've enjoyed that little trick so now i will so of course you you i do recommend like i don't actually i don't recommend you can do whatever you want i just like to uh ink the edges of my sheets and i might have done it before i just didn't do it this time but i don't think it changes much in this case you know it works very well okay but i do recommend however that if you have stamps that you want to put on certain of your papers because this is a notepad that i'm grabbing pieces of leftover papers everywhere and if there's a sheet of paper doesn't that doesn't have a whole lot of details and I want to embellish it you have to do so before you put that wax okay there we go okay this is absolutely gorgeous I love it so much oh my gosh it's not even the same paper anymore love it okay I might do it on the first one. This is thicker though. This is cardstock. I have no idea what it would do on cardstock to tell you the truth. I have not tried it. Oh, it's beautiful. Let me see something. Oh yeah, you can even see the book page in the back. I don't know if you can see that as I'm moving it. It's amazing. Oh, I love it. Okay. Um maybe this way okay now I'm going to do this one because I can't wait to see what it's gonna look like first I want to see you do I want to print a little something it's a little bare so um, I think I have leftover ink on this thing let's see yeah there you go perfect there it was just a little too white to my liking and I will also oh I'm afraid that the back will melt now that I put anyways I'm gonna blow dry it <laughs> I love this I really really love it it's beautiful oh my goodness I'm so glad that she showed us this trick I never knew I'm gonna be waxing a lot of papers I just love how it changes the whole structure the whole look everything I am really in love with this it, this is just absolutely lovely okay so the technique of the wax is one of them that I really wanted to show you now um, I will show you what I how I did this this is really simple but it's very useful and 
I'll show you why. So you can use whatever buttons you have. Okay, first I will need a piece of paper like this one to do a pocket. Now, I don't know if I want to start this one with a pocket necessarily. Plus, I really love this. I don't want to hide it. Um, hmm. Okay, you know what? The pocket doesn't have to be on top. It can be anywhere. I'm just going to show you, just to show you, because I don't know if this one will have a pocket. But I do want to show you how I did it. So, um, yeah, perfect. I'm going to cut this. I'm not measuring so I'm thinking oh well I'm very good <laughs> wow okay I'm really good <laughs> eyeballing is my thing I guess okay so I will also take my corner punch because I like the corners to be rounded like such and what I've done here as well is I used um, a circle punch to do no I didn't not in this one Oh no, because it's not an envelope. Okay, that's fine. So I will round the corners of... Hmm, wondering which way is more interesting, actually. I like the number four. I would like to see it somewhere. But then the bottom is pretty bare. Huh. And this is too small. I'm realizing this was a lot bigger. Okay, let me find something else. Um, well, how about a larger piece of paper? Okay. So, how about I cut this like so. And this looks like it's about the same width, I'm not sure. Pretty much. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So you fold, of course, the first part, and the second part will go just a tiny bit above it, like so. And you fold. And like I said, I want these corners to be rounded. go I will ink the edges I hope everybody is doing well I um, I'm on vacation meaning I don't work in the summer but we went on a vacation and we went to see my parents back home in Quebec and we also went to Niagara Falls it's a lot of driving <laughs> Um, but I really, really loved it. It was a whole lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, I mean, my son had never seen the falls, so it was a nice thing to go and show him. There's so many things to do. It's a lot of fun for kids as well. So, okay. So you can take whatever buttons you have. I have these beautiful embellished ones that I decided to use. Um... I'm thinking, hold on, which ones do I want? Hmm, whoops, I have all kinds. And I have these regular ones as well that would work. Actually, although I did flower ones, I kind of like the idea of these for some reason. Huh, I don't know. I like it. Do I take two of the same? Well, I have a different one here. And what about... Hmm. I do like these, the little, the smaller ones for this. But I had those flower buttons that I could use. Um... I don't know I think I'll use these for today okay I, you could also make your own like I've showed before you just make your own and uh, 
you could use this button instead but today i will use real buttons okay so then i use a piece of cardstock that i have it's pretty thick so it could be a piece of packaging whatever you have handy use what you have and i will make two circles like so and there you go and then i will use some thread and what i do is i sew the button to the piece of cardstock Oops, if I can thread my needle, that will be great. And I'm wearing glasses, mind you. And this is a big needle. <laughs> ah. Okay. Ah, you know, ever since I got over 50, I've needed uh, glasses to see. Ah. The beauties of aging. <laughs> hey, you know what? It's okay. I'm still here. That's all that matters, right? <laughs> I, I have never had a problem with getting older. There's things I don't like about getting older, but getting older itself, I'm all good. I just want to be here as long as I can. <laughs> okay. I hope, uh, I don't know how hot it is where you are, but here, um, well, in Niagara Falls, it was 30 some degrees Celsius plus the humidex, which made it feel like 41 Celsius. So that's pretty darn hot. And uh, it's the same thing here in Cape Breton now that we've came back. And it was the same thing in Quebec. So three provinces, and I'm guessing New Brunswick as well, since, you know, they're in the middle of Quebec and, and, um, and uh, Nova Scotia. And um, yeah. So it's we we're having a nice uh, nice heat wave <laughs> to say the least. Okay, um, so what I do is I sew the button to the piece of cardboard, like so. So of course I'm going to jump that step, and I'll come back when it's done because this is really just about sewing a button to a piece of cardstock okay so once you have sewn your buttons to the piece of cardstock what you want to do is when i tied my um thread i left a long piece hanging from one of them and that one i will glue on top so i put glue here like so And we're gonna wait until it sets. And now the other one. Okay. Like so. Now, I think I'm not sure, but I think Bohemian Crafting did this, but I've done it before. So who, like, who, where did that idea come from? I am uncertain. I think she does it in the last, no, I don't know. <laughs> Never mind me. But um, I know she did also these things because I've seen it before with her, but I've seen it with others. So I couldn't tell you where I got this. And there you go. But this is a little long so now i'm i'm going to cut it right here and there you go and then all you need to do is so let's say i wanted to glue it on this first page i would do so i don't want to i don't think not on this page i love the flower and i really don't like hiding it um hmm if it was lower you would see some of the flower but I don't know maybe like this it's well that's not too bad but i don't oh, i'm throwing i like the flower mm, i like the butterfly in this but i like the wax effect uh i don't know but it will go somewhere <laughs> let me see oh i think it would look nice on this oh la la oh i like that 
let me show you a tiny bit like this there you go oh i like this we 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 gem i love it okay i will glue this on that piece of paper right there and what i do and you can just use glue if you want i feel safer putting some of this double-sided tape first and then some glue in the middle it's just like a double safety you know like i'm sure that if one is not super glued the other one will hold on i don't know it's just me <laughs> i want my things to last a long time and especially with paper where it's it gets manipulated a lot I always want to make certain that everything stays glued, especially if I'm shipping something in another country, um, you know, with the heat and everything. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. <laughs> okay. How about we glue it right about here? Oh, I love it. Isn't that sweet? And it makes like a little surprise. You know, you're going through the pages of your... Um, little notepad here and all of a sudden you fall onto this beautiful little you know like a pocket of some sort and then you open it and you can write notes now if you want to make this lighter so that you can write let me show you so I will use white gesso but I will also show you Actually, let me just put this all away and I can show you both, okay? Not everybody has white gesso because maybe you don't have to use it. You don't do art journaling or, you know, you just never found a use for it and that's okay. So I use my fingers. You're welcome to use a brush. I like the subtlety the finger allows me to, you know, the way I can spread. I will put this closer. So as you can see, I can still see the letters. Now, of course, you can go super thick or very light. I like to go on the lighter side. I like to see that there was a page there. There was a book page underneath. And I like the idea that we can see that, see? And some places I might put it a little darker. But in general, I do like to show that there was once a book underneath. And once it dries, it's light enough that you can see through and it's light enough that you can write on it and then we will kind of forget whatever is behind and of course you can add more if you want to hide it more if you don't have white gesso that's not a problem any inexpensive white acrylic will do and let me show you you can also dial uh i think this is dry <laughs> let me see oh please don't be dry ah, okay too much that's a lot so let me <laughs> grab my paper ah, okay but as you can see let's rub it with our fingers this oh my goodness Chantal. okay of course i don't have my water bottle anymore because i put this in it but you could light it make it lighter by mixing it with water or not and as you can see I'd be hard-pressed to say which one is acrylic and which one is uh, white gesso and that's why I always say use what you have okay because we don't I mean I don't have the financial means to buy everything on the planet and uh, most of us don't Plus, I don't need everything on the planet. I'm pretty satisfied with what I have. A lot of times we have way more than we think. You just gotta try and use it differently. Now, if you don't like the white effect, there you go. It is white, no more. And let's dry this. Okay, and if you don't have the spray, maybe you have the um, the distress inks, so you could easily just pick your a brush, 
and if you don't have that you know a soft toothbrush it's just the same like soft I would I would choose a soft bristle because it would it could sometimes uh, damage your paper if it's a very delicate paper and you could go over with a brush instead there we go or you can use more beigey acrylic if that's what you're going to use you know what I mean like there's all kinds of ways now of course this doesn't look good because this was supposed to be to darken one of our pages but as you can see I could easily write on it and now it will come out a lot better so I could journal now and we will be able to see it more than if I had just left it like this now that's getting a little confusing and this is a lot better and of course you can put as much or as little gesso or acrylic as you wish and there you go so of course the other little thing I did do in my um, now I have paint everywhere <laughs> on in my little notepad is I added this little pocket now this is really simple it's just a little piece of paper um, actually wait now no I made this one longer and I folded it and the excess became the pocket okay and uh, I just added some hand stitching because I liked that it reminded us of the front part like so and one other thing I want to say is I only added eyelets to the back and the front the reason for that is if I, I felt that if I added eyelets to every single page this little notepad would be very thick right here and it wouldn't it, it wouldn't look right because this would be super high and this would be like thin so I thought okay I this would not work and I wanted it to look you know finished and and you know like complete a real thing and I didn't want the pages to rip so what I did is I put eyelids in the front and in the back but what about the middle pages how do we prevent the middle pages from ripping well look what I've done I'll show you real quick um, where is my little punch right here um, okay last trick here we go see the sheets <laughs> so all I've done is this I've punched a few like so well actually four per page okay so let's pretend we're going to put it on this one so I'm going to close this like so oh my goodness I actually love this I think it fits the whole page it's like a little more grungy and this is super feminine I'm going to finish this oh yes I am okay <laughs> whoops sorry wrong camera angle okay so I would put four so I, let me just cut four with my uh, hands full of paint enjoy <laughs> okay and I will glue them so whoops okay there's a bubble but it was the right size <laughs> ah, okay one here one here I'm gonna glue those real there you go okay so sometimes it's a little hard to see but I don't know if you can see with the angle do you see this you can see through the paper with the light so I'm just gonna you know mark where I'm supposed to glue the other ones just because I would like them to be you know somewhat uh, even <laughs> so okay put some glue I mean the process of process is a little long maybe some of you have better tricks and uh, you're more than welcome to comment I am learning through this journey with you guys or ladies I don't want to offend anyone by the way but I know that my demographic I'm going to do this by the way just because I didn't do it and I think it's a little too light hold on I'll be right back Okay, so I dried it because I thought it was a little too light for me. I love the grungy and like, I don't know, there's something about it. Now I'm going to have to change my... Remember at the beginning I showed you the pages I chose for this new um, notepad, but 
this makes me feel like I need to do something grungy. So I'm going to go in the grungy vein and maybe just keep these for something else. Um, and so, yes, so as I was saying, my demographic shows on YouTube that 100% uh, of my beautiful uh, viewers are women. If that's not the case, I apologize. And I do welcome everyone. Um, absolutely. So when I say ladies, it's just because of what youtube says and if i'm wrong oh please let me know <laughs> i would love to know if there's a gentleman here watching it would be pretty pretty awesome to know okay so and what i do next is simple well a lot of times actually the last time what i've done is i put all my sheets together like so and I made uh, a hole in every single one of them at the same time, okay? But now, like I said, I'm thinking of doing this a little more grungy, so I'm not gonna do it just now because these might become tags or something. Um, and yes, there you go. Whoops, what I've done actually, to tell you the truth, like this is just one page, but what I've done is uh, once you choose all your pages, I made a hole in every single one of them okay because that way you're sure they're all even and then i glued all these little circles four per page on each side like two here and two in the back and then i punch a re-punched a hole okay so because i i helped myself with the light to know where to glue because then it would hide the holes i've made but at least it would be a guide to where i was going to put these of course you could you know always measure but you know me I'm not gonna measure unless I have to. And there you go. So um, this is what I wanted to show you today. I hope you have learned something. Oh, I do hope you try this with the wax. Oh my goodness, it's so much fun. Oh, you have to try. Please try, just go grab a candle. If it's not a long one like this, uh, take a tea light, take it out, out of the metallic uh, frame that it's in. And just go ahead and with a dryer, um, I hope you have an art dryer. Otherwise, I would try with a hair dryer for this. I'm fairly certain it would work. And uh, yeah, I mean, oh, you can even, oh my goodness, I hope you see this. Hold on. I'm trying to find, yes. Do you see the stamp in the back? It's the, it's this stamp and you can kind of see it through. Oh my goodness. I have to do other things with this wax. I'm not kidding. This is going to be my new thing. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed this. And the reason why I, I didn't explain this part, but the reason why I sew the buttons to the, the piece of cardboard and not just right through is because I find that, it, first of all, it adds some kind of a vintage look. I really love it. And it allows for the rope to move freely underneath the buttons like so. It, that's just my opinion it doesn't doesn't have to be this way you could just sew buttons and there you go so I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little crafting session I was hoping to find ideas um, for you know my back from vacation although I'm still like I said on vacation and um, well I hope you've enjoyed it I want to give you a great big hug from here Nova Scotia Canada and please share my videos with your social media. You have no idea how much I need to, for my channel to get um, noticed. Like, you know, maybe your friends want to see something and they just don't know that I exist. So if you would please share my videos and any comments you want to make, I'm more than happy to reply. If you need uh, any of my digital papers, if, if they're uh, something that you like, just go on my Etsy shop, The Purring Cat Studio. And uh, the link is also for my shop. It's on my uh, Facebook page, The Purring Cat Studio. And also, if you're watching this on a mobile or your computer, there is the uh, link that you just have to click on the logo of Etsy um, on my channel and you will be right in my shop. So I will say... Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>